September session of the Paulding County Planning Commission. At this time, if you have an audible device, whatever that may be, please turn it off or silent so it doesn't interrupt the proceedings of this meeting. At this time, I'm going to dispense with um, rules for participation in a public meeting. Uh, those rules are available probably at the back desk there or just outside the door into the lobby um, if you'd like to take a copy for reading or you need to refer to it. Again, this is a recommending body. Uh, we will hear the applications that are brought before it today and then we will render a recommendation to be forwarded to the jurisdiction in whose uh, um, area it is in. So in this case, we have one application that will be in Paulding County Board of Commissioners jurisdiction, so it will be forwarded to their meeting. And please correct me if I'm wrong, is it tonight at 7? Yes. So tonight at 7. So once we have done this, um, if you are the applicant, you will need to be present for it to be considered at tonight's meeting of the Board of Commissioners at 7 o'clock. If you have an interest in the application, you need, you should also be present. During the course of this meeting, any applicant that uh, is brought before us is going to have 15 minutes to present their application. You may utilize all of that time or reserve some for rebuttal. Uh, questions from the Planning Commission or the Board of Commissioners will not count against your time. Um, opposition, likewise, anybody who may have questions, comments, or concerns or is opposed to the application will also have 15 minutes collectively. <coughs> So if you have anybody else that is wanting to speak, uh, if you have opposition, you have somebody else wanting to speak, please buy, be mindful of their time, but it's 15 minutes cumulative. Um, at this time, I will entertain a uh, motion regarding the minutes from the previous session of this body. Has everybody had an opportunity to read that? If there's any concerns or questions or edits? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion to approve from Mr. Aston. I have a second from Mr. Henson. All in favor? Motion passes 4 0 and 1. Again, once uh, both applicants and opposition, once you call it to the lectern in order to speak, please direct all your comments to the chair, which would be me. And at this time, Mr. Robinson. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, zoning application today is 2020 17 Z. <laughs> Application by Carol Tutherow and Josh Thompson to rezone 6.52 acres from R2 suburban residential to I1 light industrial to use existing house as an office building for a towing service and impound lot. Property is located in land lots or land lots 374, District 19, Section 2. And it's, the address is 1891 Popper Springs Road, Hiram, Georgia. It's in commission, commission post one. Staff has recommended approval with four stipulations that's printed and available. And we've had one neighbor come by to see us with questions and no noted opposition. Applicant is present. If the applicant will please come around to the lectern, sign in, state your name, and address your comments to the chair. Good afternoon, Planning Commission, Board of Commissioners, staff, and public. My name is Jonathan Jones. I'm with Elite Engineering. I'm here representing Carol and Josh for their uh, request to zone the property from R2 to industrial. Um, the intent is to be a, uh, a wrecker service impound yard, a temporary impound yard. Um, Mr. Thompson owns the land next door. And... Um, we have reviewed uh, we have reviewed the zoning stipulations, and my client is in uh, in agreement with those stipulations. And uh, you know, we we noted that the uh, staff uh, staff has recommended approval, and um, the project is uh, proposing, which is required, a 50 foot perimeter buffer uh, around the property, um, and it to be fenced in. Um, so the existing home uh, will be used as an office, um, and then you know the required. Necessary parking will be will be put in by the according to the regulations. Other than that, um, it's a, it's a simple uh, process of uh, answering your questions and uh, keeping any of the additional time needed for rebuttal. Thank you very much. Um, yes, ma'am. Who yes. owns the property on eighteen ninety one Papa Spring? 
who owns the property at 1891 Poplar Springs. Um, that is this property. Um, yeah, Mr. Thompson does, Josh Thompson. Yeah, he's the actual owner. Jesse, do you live in Paulding, him? Mm -hmm. What's that mean? Do you live in Paulding? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And just to reiterate, you've seen the four uh, staff recommended yep. stipulations, and your client is agreeable yeah, to we're all in, those. We're in agreement with those stipulations, yes, sir. Are there any questions to the applicant from Planning Commission? Uh, yes, you mentioned a buffer now. Uh, are we going to have a fence at, plus a buffer, or are we just having? Yes, sir. It's a requirement to have be fenced in. Um, and for security purposes, he'd fence it in anyway. But yeah, from the back of the home, um, inside the buffer. All the way around, it is intended to be fenced. Yes, sir. Right. Then you would have something like uh, Lakeland Cypress or something like that as well. Um, I guess it would have to be planted back to buffer standards. Uh, isn't that right, Chris? Uh, yes. Anything that is is it could be undisturbed in some locations, especially on the eastern side of the Most track. Most likely would be. Yeah. And on the eastern side of the lake, and but there may be some screening to the north on there and maybe some to the south T typically the way that that works is if it's uh, barren or, or disturbed we have to plan about the buffer standards if it's an existing vegetation uh, Josh doesn't have any intentions of removing those trees and keeping it as a natural barrier buffer and would that be a specification that would be looked at in plan review to ensure compliance with zoning requirements that is correct there any other questions to the applicant from the Planning Commission on the impound lot, so you're, you're not going to use the whole six and a half acres, are you? No, sir. I think that the impound area is mm, roughly 2.6, uh, if, 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 if I read that correctly. Yeah, I think 2.6 of it. What about so will that be located on the within that six and a half acres? Um, it's it's behind the home. If, if I can approach, I can show you. Um, and I'll, I'll walk it by each one of you. It's the highlighted. You'll see the fence in property so it'll be buffer to buffer 50 foot all around behind the home fenced in Yeah, I'm, it'll be brought up to whatever codes required for it to be used as a commercial office. Yes, ma'am. That's that's not necessarily my realm of expertise, but I'm sure that Steve Turner and his team will make sure that it meets all the requirements that's uh, necessary to get a building permit or, a, I guess, an occupancy permit for, for the use of a office. Is this a paved lot? Is it paved lot? No, it's not intended to be paved. Okay. Yeah. Oh. On the, on the record service, is it going to just pay for light uh, trucks and cars, or is it going to be uh, uh, potentially uh, heavy-duty records with pulling tractor trailers? Or? No, I think that it uh, it's defined. I read it somewhere. It's just standard standard record. Yeah, it's just standard record service, not any heavy duties, uh, bringing semis or dump trucks or anything like that. It's just a standard record service. And uh, also the impound lot... Uh, you know, a lot of times when you have things impounded, they, they leak, and I know if you got a lake there, so I don't know if that'd be addressed in plan review or what, but uh, certainly when anything that's leaking out of the uh, item stored there, uh, leaching into the lake. Yes, sir, and, I, and I'll be honest, I don't know what the uh, requirement is from a uh, regulation standpoint for uh, containing any kind of uh, contaminants, but uh, I'd probably lend myself to Chris to if he knew what the policy might be for that but um, we definitely could could uh, in the plan review show a containment uh, uh, site plan I, I've done that for uh, Atlanta auto, uh, auto salvage and it was relatively easy it's just building basically a pond before the pond just to capture any kind of contaminants that may exit, try to exit the property would, would you be willing to make that additional stipulation um, the intent is to remove that pond altogether from the site but uh uh you know 
Well, I think the concern, if I'm you know, if I'm putting words in your mouth, tell me, but the map that we're looking at is showing what could be intermittent or seasonal streams or could be a simple stream running through both, you know, running through the question a lot. So you may drain the pond, but you still may have the issue of a seasonal stream that has to be mitigated, essentially, because you don't want to release those pollutants downstream. The, the only thing that can enter the storm sewer system of either the county or the cities is rainwater not even chlorinated water or fluoridated water it can only be rainwater otherwise it's considered an illicit discharge certainly oil radiator fluid and the rest of it would be so the yeah, question okay. is are you going to be able be agreeable to make the necessary commitment to ensure that that is going to be prevented yeah whatever is necessary um and also that pond is that's on site is actually elevation wise upstream from this impound area okay and you'll still be using the same entrance as the auto recycle facility yes sir okay the same roadway you're talking about yeah mm -hmm. yeah we'll be coming down the same road that's right if you don't mind i'll go to you know chris or you can bat this to somebody else but the environmental concerns mentioned by mr aston is that something that's pointedly going to be addressed in plan review uh normally on when we go through the plan review process for, with anything, we're going to look at the storm water and any possibilities of, of a discharge. It. And so uh, I know that, uh, and, and Jonathan or the applicant may be able to explain, as far as the existing businesses out there, I'm sure there's some EPD standards and such that they have to meet and follow, and, and that would be something that would be required. Well, I guess I would first ask the, uh, our attorney, is there anything that you can think of that would prevent us adding the additional stipulation regarding environmental protections? I'm not aware, I'm not aware of anything um, that would prevent, prevent you all from adding an additional okay. stipulation to that effect. If the applicant would agree to take all necessary steps to prevent contamination of the streams by by uh, any fluids or discharge from this particular use being being requested. Um, I think the, the commission is also free to ask the applicant directly what's, what measures are in place right now to prevent that from happening. If y'all would like to, we can do that. Well, could we have the applicant or his applicant's agent please come forward and explain what you currently have in place that would address that or what your intentions are to address that? I mean, as of right now, like I said, the salvage yard that backs up behind it, I, we, like I said, we keep up with EPA regulations. I pay, we, it's, we get salt well, water sample tests and everything done every year, yearly for that, and it's never had an issue. Like I said, it's passed with flying colors. But you're agreeable to the Yeah, I'm, I'm fully agreeable mentioned. with whatever it, whatever it takes to make it make it work okay and I know that the county has adopted the set of stormwater ordinances the suite of stormwater ordinances that the, the city of Hiram has as well which governs any type of pollutant that may come from the property so the county has means of enforcement even beyond the stipulations that might be in place so yes, thank sir. you very much is there any other questions to the applicant Board of Commissioners any questions to the applicant Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak on behalf of this application? Hearing none, is there anyone that would wish to speak in opposition to this application or may have questions, comments, or concerns regarding it? This time, then, I will entertain a motion with regard to application 2020-17-Z. Please remember there's four listed stipulations and there's a possible fifth if there's anybody wanting to add that in. I make a motion we approve with the four listed stipulations with an additional fifth stipulation. The owner agrees to use best management practices to protect existing streams, ponds, and lakes. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Aston with the four list of stipulations adding the fifth as he recited and I have a second from Ms. Fitzgerald do all in favor motion passes four zero and one 
So again, this application will be forwarded to tonight's meeting of the Board of Commissioners at 7 o'clock. The applicant or the applicant's agent needs to be present for it to be considered. And if there's anybody else that wishes or has an interest in it, you should be present also. At this time, uh, we have a item that was tabled, as I understand it, from the previous session of this body. It is a zoning ordinance text amendment. The amendment is in regards to Article 8, Section W, creating a new MPR master plan residential district and other provisions related to the creation of the new district. At this time, I would ask Ms. Lippman, thank you for coming forward, to please give us an update on any considerations after the previous meeting. Okay. Um, I'll just give a brief overview of what this new district is. This district master plan residential is a successor to the former district that we had called plan residential development. Um, this district looks to look at large tracts of land. The minimum acreage for this is 300 contiguous acres. Um, similar to PRD, it allows um, single family houses, amenity areas, etc. Um, we've incorporated some of the new special, what we're calling special exception uses that um, on our year-long plus development ordinance update, um, we've added to all our zoning districts what's called a special exception use. Um, and two things I'd like to point out in that is that in this master plan residential, we are proposing to allow up to 10% of a development to contain townhouses. Um, similar to PRD, we do also allow up to 15% of a, <coughs> excuse me, a development to have a, of those uses permitted in the B1 general business district. So we are proposing this to be a sort of a live work play type of community. Um, we did present this got to you last month. Um, everyone thought that we needed to take one more look at it. Um, we actually last Tuesday had a workshop. We had several members of the Planning Commission, several members of the Board of Commissioners along with planning staff and um, I think one of the one of the changes that we did make after last month's meeting we had um, worked on the Board of Commissioners adopted the changes to R55 and one of the requirements that came out of that was submission of house elevation plans um, that has been entered into master plan residential so they will have to provide those house elevation plans um, one thing about master plan residential um, it still only allows two units per acre but it does allow an 8,000 square foot lot um, we did make a change from your last one to allow a minimum lot width the building line to be 65 feet um, we reduced the minimum width of a townhouse to 24 feet and <clears throat> I'm gonna let our attorney mr. Phillips explain um, one thing we added was what we are calling the master plan residential individualized site specific development plan that was added since our last meeting and I'm gonna turn it over to him to explain that uh, planning commission members in NPR there is a general set of criteria that an applicant has to satisfy in order to qualify for NPR including various submittals in the additional section we added uh, as Ms. Littman said, it's, it's, it's called an individualized site-specific development plan. And what that does is that tries to capture those circumstances where a developer may come in and they have a, perhaps a unique product, a product that they would like to put on the ground out there, but for some reason it needs to fall below the minimum set in NPR or for some reason it may need to exceed the maximum set in NPR. The plan will require a lot of due diligence up front, but the plan, the, the developer would come in and say, this is what my product looks like. This is what, this is why I need to go below this minimum, or this is why I need to exceed. It requires planning commission review and then subsequently BOC approval. And if such a plan is approved when the develop com developer comes in and constructs it it needs to be consistent uh, with what has been approved so you may have a great product but it might need it, it might require a smaller width if it comes in and staff looks at it and says hey this looks like a good thing planning commission looks at it and looks at the visuals and says 
this looks like a good thing and then the BOC ultimately approves it, then they could dip below that minimum or exceed a maximum, whatever it happens to be. The goal here is to allow projects that are good for Paulding County in the opinion of this board and the board of commissioners that might otherwise not qualify because of some restrictions. What those are going to be, we don't know as of yet. But I think the most important part of the individualized site-specific plan is the applicant is going to have to build the thing consistent with the plan that was approved. Unlike some of the things that you all have seen before where something comes in that looks real nice and three years later there's something entirely different there. Um, before I open it up to any questions, um, this is changing um, Article 8, adding a new, creating a new zoning district. Um, we also proposing to add six, I think six definitions to Article 3, and those are for amenity, common storage facility, common space, open space, pod, and special exception use. Um, this new zoning district will also require an addition to Article 6, which is the general provisions um, as it deals with minimum buffer width requirements. Whenever we add a new district, we needed to put in all those buffers because buffers is one of the key things of this district. There is, I'll just point out, um, along any street front, there's a required 75 foot buffer and any other property line is required to have a 50 foot buffer. So. Um, with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions that anybody has, and unless we need to do the public hearing part first. Are there any questions to staff? If we were to approve this MPR, and we get into development, and something needs to be tweaked, what is the process that we can adjust this? Mr. Hanson, that's a great question. That's something that we have been talking about over the last 24, 48 hours with various developers. Um, since we've been having those discussions, you know, let me back up for a moment. The minimum acreage on this 300, do I have that right? 300 acres. And one of the new concepts in here is this is going to be developed by pod. So you may have multiple pods in a 300, 400, 800 acre development. When you come to zoning, you may present elevations or you may have a site specific situation. You're not exactly sure what all nine or ten of your pods are going to look at, look like when you first come into zoning. Because these pods may get developed years down the road and styles and, and concepts may change. So Mr. Hanson, in, in answer to your question, we are in the process of starting a potential new amendment, assuming this one passes today, uh, that would take into consideration subsequent changes. The idea is to have some things that could be approved at the staff level for later changes, and then another set of items that the staff can't approve, but could only be approved by going through a formal uh, zoning amendment present presentation to y'all with recommendation of the BOC and ultimate approval or denial from the BOC. So would the staff approve amendments then or, or staff approved changes be funneled through say the development waiver review, waiver review committee or is this be a totally separate? That is a great question. We are weighing okay. those alternatives right now to see what the best really the most efficient route but also the most responsible route considering the degree of the proposed change. Okay. We don't, what we don't want to have happen is somebody try to submit a change for solely staff approval that is fundamentally different from what was previously approved. That needs to go through the formalities of the zoning ordinance. I agree that we put staff in a bad position. Are there any other questions? Ms. Lipman, Planning Commission, Board of Commissioners, Mr. Aston. Mr. Carmichael. I would just like to uh, say a, a thank you to Ann and Chris and Jason. Uh, they put a tremendous amount of time into getting all the wording correct. Uh, also, Commissioner Stover has been heavily involved with, uh, with his expertise in building and development. Um, so it's been a long time coming, uh, and I'm just grateful that it looks like we're about to cross the finish line.
Any further comments? Um, after having discussion before the meeting began, um, if there's no further comments or questions to staff, at this time I'm going to open up the, to the floor for any public comment that may, anybody that may want to make that. If you are interested in saying anything with regard to this amendment, please stand to the lectern, state your name, and address your comments to the chair. Hearing none, then I'm going to close this section. Uh, for public comment. Um, I guess with the PRD, I should also ask Mr. Hofstetter, did you have anything that you would like to add as far as consideration of this amendment? No, very good. Okay. Well then, I will second uh, Mr. Chairman Carmichael's comments concerning the staff, <coughs> both Ann, Chris, and our fine county slash city attorney. Um, very much do appreciate and respect the work that they put in, and they certainly make my life easy trying to do this. So at this time, I would entertain a motion with regard to the zoning, zoning ordinate, ordinance text amendment that is before us for the master plan residential district. I make a motion with approval. I have a motion to approve by Mr. Aston. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Henson. All in favor? Motion passes 4 0 and 1. At this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Henson. Okay. Second by Ms. Fitzgerald. All in favor? Motion passes 4-0-1. I thank you very much for your attendance and cooperation. Have a great day.